Module 7 has to do with consciousness, sleep, and dreams. And so all of that is kind of included in this section. Um, we're going to talk about right now various levels of consciousness and uh, something called circadian rhythms. In terms of levels of consciousness, I want to talk real quick about uh, just some of the terms you see on the screen. First thing, when we talk about somebody being conscious, um, to be conscious, that means you're awake, you're alert, you're responding to your environment. Those three things, awake, alert, and responding to your environment. Um, that means you're conscious. But over here you see the term unconsciousness, okay, unconsciousness. That would be, for example, somebody who's not awake, not alert, not responding to their environment. So, for example, a boxer who gets knocked out and they're laying there on the mat, they're unconscious in that regard, they're not responsive to their environment. Okay, so we've got consciousness, we've got unconsciousness. Now, I share with you also this word here, the unconscious. You have to be careful when you, you know, listen to people because sometimes um, people will refer to one or the other and you have to know which one they're talking about. If we talk about the unconscious, Typically, what that means is Freud's view of the unconscious mind. We've already talked quite a bit about that. So, you know, if we talk about the unconscious, that's Freud. But if we talk about unconsciousness or being unconscious, that's the opposite of awake, alert, and responsive. Okay? Uh, the rest of these terms, let's take a look here real quick. Daydreaming. Um, everybody daydreams. Research says men and women tend to uh, daydream pretty much equally and for the most part about the same things. Um, now this may surprise you. People a lot of times tend to think that you know daydreams have a sexual content or something of that nature. Most of the time they don't. Uh, the huge majority of the time they don't. Uh, men and women tend to daydream about the same types of things. And to be totally honest, they're kind of boring. Um, most daydreams consist of uh, just routine, run-of-the-mill things that somebody has to do, uh, either later that day, later that night. Uh, you may kind of start daydreaming in one of your classes, and most likely you're thinking about something that you have to do for either another class, or you're thinking about something you may have to do later that evening. You know, you have to leave school, you have to pick up some, you know, a, a little brother or sister, or, uh, then you have to run an errand for mom or dad, or you have to do a variety of things. Most daydreams uh, are, are very boring stuff like that. Um, sleep. We will talk about sleep this unit. We're not going to do it in this screencast, but um, sleep, basically we're talking about five distinct levels or, or stages of sleep and we'll go through them in class actually. Uh, you might want to read up on them before we talk about them. It's very interesting the the different stages that you go through. Dreams. We'll also talk about those during class uh, but dreams we'll talk about various theories about why we dream, what dreams do for us, do dreams actually have any kind of meaning whatsoever. Uh, a lot of people have various theories about dreams. Now, altered states. What that's referring to is altered states of consciousness. So if you kind of view, you know, being conscious as one extreme and being totally unconscious as the other extreme, altered states would be somewhere in the middle there. Uh, things like hypnosis. Uh, hypnosis is actually defined as an altered state of consciousness um, and basically includes a, a very uh, high level of suggestibility. Um, people use hypnosis for a variety of things, uh, pain reduction and um, trying to investigate memories, past memories, things like that. So there's a variety of things that hypnosis is used for. Uh, other things that can uh, cause you to have like an altered state of consciousness. Uh, different types of drugs. There are some drugs that, that kind of uh, create an altered state of consciousness. And then meditation. 
uh, some people meditate and actually kind of go into uh, I don't know if you want to call it a trance or you know at least some people view it as a different state of consciousness now let's talk about what we call circadian rhythms and this term, I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but circadian rhythms refers to our biological clock. Um, now, let's not confuse this, okay? Females, you may have heard many times people uh, talk about a woman's biological clock, kind of referring to the idea that, oh, if a woman hasn't had children by, you know, her mid-30s, you know, her biological clock is running out, you know, that sort of thing. That is not, absolutely not, what we're talking about here. When we talk about circadian rhythms, we're talking about men and women. We're talking about something that influences you every single day of your life, okay? This is kind of uh, your awake and alert and or drowsy sleep cycle, okay, that you go through every single day. Um, different people have kind of a different type of circadian rhythms. Some people require more sleep than others. Some people are morning people. Some people are evening people. Uh, you have to kind of learn that. But basically, your circadian rhythms refer to when you're most awake, alert, and, and, and ready to go. And then there's other times of the day when you're not, okay? You're ready to, to hit the sack. So that's what we're talking about is your biological clock in that regard. Now, if you think of circadian rhythms being a 24-hour cycle, it's not exactly, not exactly 24. It's, uh, we've found that your circadian rhythms, your body actually responds to uh, rhythms that go in a little bit, uh, of a difference between 24 and 25 hours. Research shows it's somewhere around 24 hours and 18 minutes for the circadian rhythms that you go through. Um, how do they know that stuff? Well, one way they do it is they have taken volunteers who will literally live for weeks or maybe even a couple months at a time down in a cave. Now, if you've ever been in a cave and they turn lights out, you know that it's totally pitch dark. You can't tell. You can't see anything. So if they're down in a cave, they have no access to light. So they have no idea whether it's daylight outside or nighttime. Uh, they monitor everything that these volunteers get, these research um, subjects. And so... You know, they can't just turn on a TV and find out what time it is. They can't listen to radio live. All of that stuff, uh, if they have access to any of it, it's all pre-recorded and, you know, any reference to what time of the day it is is taken away. So what they found by doing this with, you know, several different people is that uh, our bodies actually respond to about a 24-hour and 18-minute cycle. Now, um, one of the things they've also noticed here is that we tend to have kind of two periods of the day when we are most drowsy. Midnight to 6 a.m., that's when we're most kind of asleep and, and, you know, drowsy, so to speak. Even people who are in the cave who have no access to the outside world. But they've also found that kind of mid-afternoon is kind of a second time period when we tend to be very drowsy. Um, now, it's kind of interesting because if you look at research on, for example, auto accidents, you will find that those two time periods tend to be um, very uh, big times for accidents. And they've estimated that as many as 20% of all accidents are the result of people being too sleepy or drowsy to drive. And essentially, being too drowsy to drive, your reactions are very similar to if you're drunk. So it's the same type of thing. Now, we've already talked about the hypothalamus uh, in this unit, and so you know how important that is. It's a little pearl-sized part of the brain, kind of in the center of the brain. The hypothalamus is very sensitive to changes in light, to lightness and dark. So 
your hypothalamus gets messages, okay? We, through our eyes, we can tell, oh, it's daylight or, oh, it's dark time. Um, your hypothalamus gets those messages. And then the hypothalamus helps to control the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland is the master gland of our, our you know, endocrine system. So basically the hypothalamus sends out messages like late in the evening telling our glands that, hey, it's time for bed. And as a result, we start kicking in various hormones. And one of those hormones, for example, is melatonin. And that's the one that makes you sleepy, drowsy. So if you've ever had to take a, a sleeping pill to get to sleep at night, that's melatonin. So those kind of things take place and, and the hypothalamus is crucial to all of that. Next, we can also talk about shift work and long hours. Um, people who work, for example, late at night, um, that's not the greatest time in the world to work. Uh, they actually call it the graveyard shift for a reason. Um, people who work at night, they tend to be a lot less productive. The productivity goes down. The uh, accuracy of the work deteriorates quite a bit, so it's very diminished. Uh, and there's way more accidents uh, at night uh, with people working through the night. What they found is that a lot of people who actually you know, work at night go through tiny little micro sleeps where just for literally seconds or maybe even minutes at a time uh, they kind of fall asleep um, and then there's also people who you know they found that one-third of the people who work like overnight hours have actually admitted that they totally fell asleep at work um, so it doesn't give you a whole lot of confidence when you know you buy those tickets for the the real cheap airfare you know, when you're leaving at one o'clock in the morning and uh, that kind of thing, because, uh, you know, people who are pilots, people who are, um, you know, any kind of heavy machinery operators, doctors, nurses, any of that stuff, uh, when they're working through the night, it's, it's much more taxing and so forth. They've even found that it kind of drains the body. Um, they now I know they're they're linking everything to cancer nowadays, or it seems like it. But uh, the research has actually come out and said that people who work late at night on a consistent basis tend to have a much higher incidence of cancer than people who work during the daytime. So all of those things kind of play a role, and all of them are related to a person's circadian rhythm. So. Um, again, you know, make sure you understand the, the different levels of consciousness um, and the whole idea of, you know, our circadian rhythms and, and the influence of the hypothalamus. All of that is important.